welcome to uh, Geske Bigyak, our second annual youth forum. One thing that we do, uh, do recognize is that uh, it's the emerging leadership. Uh, if we can build some uh, capacity there, if we can help in any way at all, that's uh, one thing that we have to be doing. So we need to get to a place where the youth feel they have a voice and they're able to uh, get themselves together, get themselves coordinated, and put that voice forward. And I hope that we put a system in place for you where you could say, this is what we want for the future. Okay? It's your future. It's up to you. We could put mountains of books in here and say, this is the way other people do it. But if it's going to be a real practical solution, if there's going to be a youth council that comes out of this, it's got to have that cultural match. It's got to be the way that you see it. Thank you, everyone. I am proud to be here, proud to have a chance to have spoken with you. Thank you. So this is a chance for us to create something. What that something is going to be is entirely up to you. Entirely up to you. Because we often hear that the youth are the leaders of tomorrow. But are you prepared leaders of tomorrow? And that's, I think, the most important step that we can do by creating this youth council. In the three questions that we have, what is the youth council? What is it? It's a political body? Yes, is it? That's what it is. Is it? I would see it as that. You say it's a political body? Okay. What do you want the youth council to do? And you know what? At this point, what, what would really be good is to focus on you. What do I want the youth council to do? Because we know what we want as a collective, right? What do you want? What is the purpose? Why do we need a youth council? How, are, how is the community going to look at this youth council? It's like a... Positive influence. Positive influence is good. <laughs> Well, why do I think we need youth council? Structure. Structure? You want the youth council to ensure that every one of our youth is visible in the community. Visibility. How about bridging the gap? What do you guys think I mean by bridging the gap? Between elders and youth. Between elders and youth? partner up with or work with elder, elder councils. Okay, so let's say we're we doing games. How about being involved in the community? Yeah. How about Aboriginal, non Aboriginal? <laughs> Break down the barriers. Break down the barriers. Council. You guys want to leave at the end of the day tomorrow? I want to be here and I want to say like, oh, I have my youth council in place. So we want to know what type of person do you guys want to have, to have sit on this youth council? How many people do you guys want? Or what do you guys want them to do? What do you got? You know, like we're going to work together. Of, uh, possibility of like, elders determining yeah. which yeah, youth could thinking, probably fit, sit on that youth thinking. council. Like, you have the consensus there. Because they would be able to sniff the right one out. Sort of deal. You know what I mean? Like, uh, if somebody that they didn't agree with, uh, they would just say, yeah, they would say, well, because they're, they're straight. Elders will tell you straight up if they don't like you. Well, they have, they have nothing really to uh, gain or lose as opposed to chief and council who are always looking out for themselves or looking out for votes and stuff, so. We didn't want the chief and council to decide there should be a letter. I think there should, there should be a youth election also, because, uh, Give them yeah. the, the experience also, like, to kind of get the feel of what it's going to be like to elect, you know, a, a chief or a counselor. With the debrief and the evaluation too, right? Like, to figure out, like, something. Okay, guys, I, I hate to interrupt because I, I see there's a lot of good discussions going on, but it's time to uh, you, make a little change. Or, do you feel like you need to stretch your legs a little bit? Come back. Or do you want to just plow right out of the plow right out of the plow? All right, stretch as you're moving then, just twist a little bit. You know, do some lunges, walking lunges as, as, as you go to the next group or something. I like that idea, perfect. Hi, you guys, I'm Chrissy, I'm your facilitator. So today we're going to be answering three questions. What kind of candidates do we want on the youth council? Will it be elected or interviewed? What do you consider a youth? Just 
just try to envision, okay, say you want to be a part of the youth council, what do you want that person to be? Do you want that person to have to be educated, have to be patient? Like, are there any other qualities or skills or anything you'd like to add to this? Someone that's enthusiastic? People person. I feel that there should be like no judgment as opposed to like less judgment. Okay, no judgment? It's like okay, open minded. So you, yeah, have an open mind. Do you want them to be wow. elected by the elders? Do you want them to be interviewed like a job job interview? Or do you want the elders to come to a con consensus to choose them? Or do you want a youth election? What do you guys see happening? Will it be a yet elected or youth? Interviews. I personally feel that elders have no idea who the youth are yeah. unless it's their family, so that should be taken out. I feel that the youth should have either, if you're going to represent the youth, then the youth should be the one that electing these mm -hmm. candidates. How you presentate yourself, your behavior, your behavior yeah. too. The other group that had a big discussion on the age group. What do you guys consider a youth? age 16 to 35. Do you, that, you know, that, do you think that, you know, the youth council will have an impact in making sure that, you know? So that one, one mind and one vision that'll take you everywhere. If everybody has the same vision, you know, you can all work together towards, you know, that same, and you know, drive towards it as opposed to this one wants this, this one wants that, and that one wants this for this family. And, you know, nobody's going to get anywhere by, you know, thinking of themselves. Nowadays, every, everybody thinks that, they're Stuff is expected. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, and, that, and that's basically what the whole band office is run by anyway. The whole Indian Act is a whole, it's a handout. Right. It's a handout to our So to our us people. offering doorknobs, windows, nails, whatever like that, you know, people are relying on that and people, uh, you know. So how, what do we need to do? What do we need to get away from that uh, as a youth council? As a youth council, if you come in, how would you gather your youth council to say, you know what, I don't agree with what we're doing right now and... Let's make up, uh, let's put something forward to the chief and council. Not only of Litskush, but let's share it with Guest Kabegi and Guest Beg. I, I would want to have and open a their foot eyes. in both doors, you know, in, um, in the white society and in our society. Because, I don't know, I believe that you don't know where you're going in life unless you know where you come from. So, you know, like that's the reason why I moved back home as opposed to being back in Ottawa, you know, just working in the, in the mall or working anywhere else. You know, I had had a really strong sense of who I was when I moved out there, but when I was there and I felt like, you know, all alone, all by myself, I felt like I had to come back to my community and, you know, go back to my roots and stuff. So that's what I think the youth council should do. You know, go back to our roots because you can't go, you can't go wrong. Like, you know, our youth, we're not just talking about our youth today, about, you know, our youth in the next seven generations, you know, how, right. how is that going to work for them? So like, instead of like, you know, Do you guys have anything else? Madison is speaking, so I'm sorry. Oh, you want to share with us as well? No, it's, it's like, it's a lot about listening to, like, to make thoughts opinionated and to learn how what he was saying, you know, a lot of stories were saying, that a lot of stuff that you might hear might not be true or foolish or something. So we have, like, an intellectual understanding to, you know, filter, filter the. Yeah, the, truth the negative from the positive. Yeah. Someone who's not judgmental and critical. Yeah. What about having an open mind? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Bring back, you want to bring back traditional ways? Yeah, directly from Access. the from the elder to the youth, and integrated by the youth center, okay, be so, the meeting place. So we want to bring elders. But so far, the meeting I feel is going really well. Uh, there's a smaller turnout than last year, but the information, the content that we're learning today and sharing is, uh, I see, it's pretty valuable. It's it's very interactive. It's very good. We we basically touched bases on all the same issues like culture, language, traditional values that need to be brought back to all the communities again. Came to this forum because I thought it was a good opportunity to like share my opinions on the community issues and. So far, it's been pretty good. Uh, I myself, I find it very interesting. There's, uh, they bring up a lot of good facts about uh, why they need youth 
to have a say in everything. And I find it's all the same issues throughout the three communities and they all need to be addressed because they're, they're just being put on the back burner and they need to be known. And by all of us coming here and interacting with each other, we, can, we know what's going on, but by talking about it, we give it light and we give solutions to these problems that we have. I think at the end of the day that the, the, there will be at least a start and that's important there just to have a good foundation and eventually that we can build off of that. Starting up again in a couple of minutes, just a reminder that uh, finish up whatever you're doing or take care of any last minute things that you need to. And it's going to be a break until uh, quarter two, quarter to three, and in that time, um, just get the, those facilitated groups to come together. Okay. Hi everybody, I'm Chrissy. I was the facilitator over here. Okay, one of the first questions was, what kind of candidates do we want as a youth council? And a lot of them were basically straightforward. They wanted somebody that was mature, approachable, respectable, knowledgeable, honest, reliable, educated, someone who can empower other youth, someone with good listening skills, someone who is involved in the community, someone who's confident and friendly, who is actually Mi'kmaq and local from the communities, a well-rounded person who knows their identity, someone who can be committed to this process, trustworthy, caring, responsible, patient, passionate, meaning walk the walk, live a healthy lifestyle, alcohol and drug free, no judgments and no critical, an enthusiastic person, people person, experienced, a language speaker, someone who understands the communities, who's motivated, motivated individuals who want change, someone who's outspoken, not shy, they practice Mi'kmaq values in their daily living, believes in our community, has an open mind, who is a role model, who is serious, creative, and spontaneous. So then we asked, what will this person, will they be elected or have an interview process? And there was a mixture of ideas. So for the first group, they said have an interview process based on people's background experiences, based on volunteer work and resume. And then they also said have a consensus from the elders. The second group said they would like a youth election, so the youth be elected by the youth. Then the third group said anyone from the community to nominate a youth. And another question I asked was uh, how many times do you think we should have this process? And they said elections should be held once a year. So what do you consider a youth? Again, we had a very mixture of responses. First one was 16 to 25 of age. The second group, they went into further detail. They said ages 13 to 18, that due to the lack of experience, others had said 25 to 16, 30 to 16. So then we asked, how many people do we want from each community to participate on the youth council? The first group said three people and seven people. The third group said thir three per community and have it in specific age categories like 16 to 20 for one person, 20 to 30 for another, 30 to 35. Then we asked how many times do, you, do they want to meet? The first group said two times per month. Then the other group said quarterly, every four months, three times a year or seasonally. And then the third group said bi-monthly, so twice a month. And they want to try to educate network within other youth councils. So you go to the other youth councils that way, bring it back to our community, all the information that is shared. And last but not least, they said meet on a monthly basis. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chrissy. Um, so mine over here, we started with two questions, uh, but then I started putting some notes. Uh, I'll get to a little later on in this piece of paper. I find I didn't have enough paper, but it was too late. It was writing and writing and writing. Uh, I'm going to start with this one here, because it kind of goes hand in hand with what Chrissy had, uh, had shared earlier. And this one is, how will the youth council be accountable or report back to the people that they represent? So how will the youth council be accountable and report back to the uh, people they represent uh, besides general public uh, via newsletters, they say, 
Uh, another uh, one was uh, Facebook, uh, making a youth council page uh, on Facebook. Uh, they saying, but it should be monitored um, as well throughout. Uh, uh, radio, uh, posters, public service announcements, uh, P PSAs. Um, a big one that we kept on going back to were public meetings. Out of all things that were mentioned by the uh, groups going around, uh, found that public meetings would be the most effective. They would want to meet one-on-one -on -one and, and report back uh, via public meetings. Uh, they said anything, as long as anything that they put forward is positive. That was the main message as well. As long as anything that they put forward in their reporting back, uh, their being accountable, being transparent, is positive, they hope that this will be an incentive that the Youth Council is putting information out on a monthly, weekly, however often it is, and that the current chief and councils, or any other councils, are, will also start to follow and put out information as well. Um, they want a reconnection of the elders and youth. The purpose to reconnect to, uh, the youth to the land. So, and then there was number three, which is what do you want the youth council to do? Address the responsibilities and go forward, which is follow through. They want this council to educate the youth. They want to discuss, of course, issues dealing with the youth. They want to have a voice. They want to build relationship, relationships. They want to bridge gaps. They want to teach about spirituality. They want to enact change. Thank you. Okay. For me, one thing that I've learned is that um, I'm not alone. You know, for a long time, I felt like I was one of the few people that wanted to create change or wanted to do things different. And it was hard to find other people that wanted these same things and that was willing to step forward and take that risk. And today I learned that there's a lot of really amazing young people that are willing to do that and a lot more. So I wanted to say thank you to that for, uh, thank you for that to all of you. Well, you've all shown me and shared your ideas and, uh, and it's something that is going to uh, resonate with me. And ultimately, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be acting on uh, a lot of the advice and a lot of the uh, ideas that you all were willing to open yourselves up and share. Um, something that I learned today is that a lot of us here today that came together shame, s share the same ideas and visions for our community. I hope that one day that we can make those ideas like real, make them reality to uh, better our community and better all of ourselves as a whole. I'd like to say thanks to everybody who put this event together and I can't wait for tomorrow and I met a lot of new people and I, met a lot, I learned a lot of new things today and the activities were fun. Uh, today I, <clears throat> I learned that no matter how old or young you are, if we all stick together we can make a difference. <laughs> I don't know, better, better understanding of, I want to thank all my relations for, uh, for something new, a new vision, you know, this is, I don't know, really empowering. Um, I, uh, I like to say thanks for um, having me here today. I'm lucky that I, that I came. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody and that it's a good approach with this youth council. I learned more about what's going on in the communities and just what the future holds and whatnot, and it was pretty good. I just want to say thank you to the pe people who organized it. Uh, I had myself a ball today. Look forward to tomorrow. What I learned today is that uh, I learned that there's a lot of youths out there, like me, that we share the same views. And I know we went to each different station, and we really couldn't add any more. Because it was already said. Um, a lot of us have the same, same concerns about our community, but sometimes we're a little too shy to speak up and say anything. And it helps to, like Darcy said, know that you're not alone and there's other people. And then it encourages you to open up a little more and you don't feel so nervous or shy to say what's on your mind. So. 
I get a little pessimistic sometimes and don't forget to realize that there's so much of us like just sitting here. So uh, I'm really glad that I learned that today. I feel like keep positive. There's more coming. All my relations. I would like to thank everybody who came together and um, made this thing possible because um, it made me realize that there's a lot of other people who share my views and values of um, what I would like to see done and changed in a community. And uh, I learned quite a bit too, and if there ever was a youth council, I'd definitely like to participate. I can't keep serious enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could anymore. <laughs> um, I had a great experience today, you know, interviewing and, <laughs> and talking about what I'm proud of, you know, just like expressing my opinions. So I'm looking forward for tomorrow. Um, I'd like to thank the people that put this together. I found it was very interesting and I've learned a lot, especially about this youth council and how um, most of us have the same opinions about a certain subject, mainly regarding youth council. Um, it was very interesting, everything that was said, and I hope it continues tomorrow. So just as a, as a wrap up for myself, I wanna thank everybody for being such wonderful participants, for, for putting so much out there and taking that risk. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be continuing the journey tomorrow with you guys, uh, but I hope that you continue the same energy and continue the same, same flow and, and continue to build. Um. Uh, so yesterday we started with um, the mind map activity where we all had a chance to sit around and talk about the uh, qualities that we would like to see in a leader or people that inspire us. So we had a good discussion around that. Then we talked about a youth council. We got into a little bit about the structure and how we would like to see it working and how um, we would like people to be um, to apply to the position more than just being elected. They have to demonstrate uh, certain skill sets and qualities. You want them to be held to a certain standard and have a certain expectation. That was clear. And uh, I'm not sure how much of the... Um, you guys know about the comprehensive claim process and where we're going with that, but uh, the, the role of the youth would fit right, in, right into what we're trying to achieve and getting your input and um, when we're moving forward with our discussions with Quebec and Canada, what we need to know is what is it that the Mi'kmaq want? So we need to have a representation of everybody in the communities from the elders to the youth and the timing is right. It's here for us now to develop our youth council and to start working more with uh, each of you and your friends and family that you're going to bring into this process along the way. I would think so. If they had a youth council day, more people have a say to get the, have a way to get their word out. There would be some issues that the youth can't uh, fight or anything, but like uh, just little issues in the community, like uh, after school programs nowadays for the, the youth, to, something to do for them. Out of this year, I like to see that there is going to be a youth council made. That's really exciting. Why? Because I think it's important to bring our three communities together because we're so close and we really don't know each other, and there's so many of us. That um, if we have a youth council, it'll give a voice to the youth, and um, it's important because their voice is important and what they have to say actually matters. And uh, you know, we're smart. We're smarter than a lot of the people think that we are, and um, yeah, we have a lot to say. I think it'd be something really good and positive because a lot of like youth. Young people have good ideas, but they're just not put to use. Like, no one does anything with them. It's, it's basically like you have to take things into your own hands and then go from there. Because, like, like, the teachers, like, they can give you the, the knowledge, but you just have to take it in. They just, they're putting it out there for you, and we have to make the choice of if we want to take it in or not. I, th I think that's a great idea. Three, three communities come as one makes it stronger. Because uh, <clears throat> what I, I learned here was I, I never knew how much uh, we lost. And this is what informed me, this youth forum informed me that this is what we lost. I think that if we had a youth council, it would have a huge impact on every reserve. It would do a lot because it actually gives us a voice 
for once. Usually they always refer to as the youth don't know anything and it's always adults know what's right. But sometimes the youth are more, can be more intelligent than some adults. And this is our time to actually speak up about the problems that we think that we need to solve. Especially when it comes to culture. Like, there's a lot that needs to be done for our culture to come back alive. We need to be able to speak our own language. It's something that we, most of us, if you ask anybody around here, you'll hear them say that they want to be able to speak Mi'kmaq fluently. It was very informal. Um, you didn't have somebody present to you. You got to interact and you got to answer the questions yourself. So it was very opinionated. So you could you could give your voice. It's our voice and it's our opinion. So like our ideas have shined throughout the two days I've been here. And I find that's really, really good because it's a youth council. We want to have our ideas heard. And especially when the youth are usually ignored in, in all the communities, I've noticed. I find it's all the same issues throughout the three communities and they all need to be addressed because they're they're just being put on the back burner and they need to be known. And by all of us coming here and interacting with each other, we can we know what's going on, but by talking about it, we give it light and we give solutions to these problems that we have. So therefore, we can find out what can we do for this and what can we what can we do for drug and alcohol? What can we do for funding for education, what can we do for activities with culture and language and therefore we can build a better future with these three communities. I think youth council is important to uh, help get out the issues of the youth out there to the political government, uh, the general public. Uh, there has to be a voice for the youth and I think that uh, this youth council can be that voice.